Good morning. I am very excited to be with all of you today as we close in on Thanksgiving break, now just two days away from beginning. In my opinion, we have both a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be proud of with more than a week of rest and family time in our immediate future. I do not know that there is such a thing as a school vacation that doesn't feel important at the time it rolls around, but I've always felt that this particular break is especially important. The first student on campus this year arrived 11 weeks ago tomorrow. The faculty gathered even earlier than that, and we haven't had all that much time to catch our breath along the way. I happen to think that we have made excellent use of our time together this fall, in and out of classrooms, and I'm looking forward to all I am sure we will achieve through the winter and spring. Above all, I'm grateful to be part of this community and am so appreciative of what each and every one of you have contributed to this first third of the year. As I noted in chapel on Monday of this week, our time together here in Ashburn Chapel today is centered on presenting three endowed faculty chairs to three incredibly deserving members of the faculty. While we have presented individual faculty chairs to faculty members in each of the past three years, this is just the eighth occasion over my 15 years as head of school when I've had this privilege. Furthermore, this year's circumstances are unique in my experience and perhaps the school's experience with three faculty chair vacancies emerging at the same time, a characteristic of our evolving makeup and the reality that roughly half of our faculty are in their first four years at the school. When a school year begins with any of our six endowed faculty chairs vacant, the faculty are invited to share nominations of colleagues they admire with Ms. Hanlon and me. We ask that they explain why they believe the colleague or colleagues they are, are nominating are worthy of holding a chair. From there, Ms. Hanlon and I are the lucky ones who get to read and take in the profound respect and admiration Brooks School faculty members have for their colleagues. It is inspiring beyond words to know how strongly exceptional Brooks School educators feel about the work of other exceptional Brooks School educators. And perhaps the best part of the whole process is the breadth and depth of support that emerges. 16 members of our faculty were recipients of 34 different nominations by my count. While I've not kept a running tally of comparable numbers that this process has elicited in the past, I can say that this is very much on the high end. I can also say that earning and receiving the respect and admiration of colleagues for the work one does at Brooks, from those who know well how challenging and wonderful that work can be, means a great deal. Before proceeding, I'd like to begin by making sure we know who our three current endowed faculty chair holders are. All three were honored in this way in the past, and all three continue to be extraordinary members of our faculty. They are Lillian B. Miller. Ms. Miller holds the Richard F. Holmes chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2006. Dean P. Charpentier. Mr. Charpentier holds the F. Fessenden Wilder Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2008. Laura A. Heidekevich. Ms. Heidekevich holds the Hope H. Van Buren Endowed Chair and was appointed to the faculty in 2011. In that I have had seven previous occasions to present faculty chairs here in Ashburn Chapel, I've also had seven previous occasions to share some thinking about what I believe great teaching and great work with students at our school, perhaps any school, happens to be. My hunch is that you would likely get somewhat different answers from different people when asking them what makes a great teacher. The truth is that great teachers, great educators, 
and great mentors come in different shapes and sizes. And this allows a faculty possessing the breadth that our faculty possesses to reach all 354 students in ways that hold and mean something to them. This past summer, in late July, I received word that William W. Dunnell, Mr. Dunnell, who served on this faculty from 1963 to 1994, had passed away. He was an English teacher, crew and hockey coach, dormitory parent, advisor, champion of students spanning generations, and mentor to countless colleagues who drew from his wisdom and care for them. I was one of them. He held the F. Fessenden Wilder Endowed Chair, currently held by Mr. Charpentier, from 1987 until his retirement in 1994. As tribute after tribute poured in from Brooks School graduates and colleagues who attended or worked at the school at any point during his long tenure, it was both a privilege to read those tributes and illuminating about what makes a teacher and colleague great. There was deep respect for his prowess as an English teacher. There was a palpable appreciation for his passion for sport and coaching both on the ice and on the water. There were anecdotes about his counsel and wisdom from those who were his advisees. There was one former colleague who appropriately termed him the mentor of mentors when reflecting on the impact he had on her. His impact was deep and lasting and important, and all of these tributes underlined an educator's life, his life, incredibly well lived. The themes that connected all of the tributes that poured in about Mr. Dunnell landed, in my view, on two core and essential ingredients to being a great teacher. First, I've long thought that great teachers are fundamentally great furtherers of young people. I've never been sure whether furtherer is even a word, but furthering is what we aim to do with all of you, whether you are at the beginning, middle, or end of your Brooks School careers. Well, not explicitly, tribute after tribute spoke about the furthering impact Mr. Dunnell had on their lives, the inspiration he was in a moment, and in a way that endured, in a way that took hold of their hearts. He was a furtherer of the highest order. Second, a more recent measure I've applied to what I think great teachers and school people happen to be is the extent to which their work with students leaves students knowing in no uncertain terms that they matter. You would not need to read many of the tributes to know pretty quickly that Mr. Dunnell was a master at making sure his students, advisees, athletes, and anyone in his orbit felt and knew beyond a shadow of doubt that they mattered to him, to our school, to anyone they encounter in their lives. He filled students with a belief in their worth, and that mattered and continues to matter to them. In thinking about today's honorees, I was struck by the extent to which they have been furtherers of the highest order in their own right of so many students, past and present, of colleagues who have drawn from their wisdom and care, of people whose hearts they have permanently reached. I was struck by the degree to which they have succeeded at ensuring those who are in their orbits know they matter to them, students, colleagues, advisees, everyone. I was struck by the certainty I felt that all three of them have earned many times over the same sorts of tributes that were shared about Mr. Dunnell over the summer. About today's first honoree, a colleague offered, 
She is an all-in colleague that exemplifies what we are talking about when we talk about teachers that genuinely care about kids. And he added, in the classroom, she is a sought-after instructor that pushes students to produce their best work. Another wrote, when I think about our school values, she embodies many of them. She is the epitome of engagement. She protects and expects integrity in the arts. She encourages creativity in all its forms and ably facilitates the exploration of passion amongst many Brooksians. And this colleague added, from her thoughtful curation of the Lehman Arts Center to the inception of the Brooks School Arts Instagram page that started a campus-wide trend, to skilled instruction in visual arts, she has inspired our community to celebrate expression of the human condition. And a third colleague summed her up well with this. She is all Brooks all the time. About our second honoree, Ms. Hanlon and I received the following from a colleague. He leads thoughtfully. He's been a stalwart Brooks supporter in so many ways over his 17 year tenure. His peers admire him and his students love him. Another colleague offered, he is able to connect with the kids and help them develop a love of English. My son who is now at law school said to me that he is the reason why he is in law school. In his class, my son developed a love for English and it became his major in college. A third shared, I've always admired how he celebrates other strengths and is quick to point out the best in someone. His admiration for his colleagues' talents is genuine and inspires authentic collegiality. Most importantly, he is a great teacher in this. He's always looked up to his mentors like Mark Chauvin and John Hale, and it is now clear that he has joined their ranks. He is exactly that type of mentor to other younger career English teachers. Today's final honoree drew this from one colleague. He is deeply knowledgeable about the content he teaches. He models and encourages deep critical thinking and he indulges students' curiosities while stretching them to consider different angles and perspectives. His prioritization of diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and belonging in the curriculum, an unwavering commitment to being an upstander, accomplice, and ally in our community has been pivotal for students and faculty. Another wrote, his experience, empathy, perseverance, and school knowledge demonstrated true leadership. I feel so fortunate to have been able to work so closely with him. He is a role model for all of us. A third shared he is a respected teacher, a lifelong learner, insatiably curious, and above all, he is a kind and compassionate community member. His institutional memory is gold. He has a joyful heart. And when I find myself at a loss or questioning, I go to him. For my part, I would offer that today's first honoree has had a distinguished career in education and we were so extraordinarily fortunate to draw her away from a school she loved and into the challenge of opening and energizing our Center for the Arts in a pandemic, as it turned out. As her colleagues would attest, if you are in her presence, you cannot help but appreciate her talent and enthusiasm for the arts, for Brooks, and for giving to this community in ways that make a difference every single day. She makes us better. I'm proud to say that I was Dean of Faculty when today's second honoree joined the faculty as an English teacher. Over the years that have since passed, he has established himself as part of the bedrock of our faculty, teaching brilliantly, advising wisely, coaching ably, 
and sharing his love for the outdoors with students and colleagues through winter term courses that all recall vividly. There is depth and integrity and selflessness to him that has inspired students and colleagues for 17 years. Our third honoree is at the quarter century mark of his tenure on our faculty. And his career in edu education extends beyond that. There isn't much he hasn't done and done well at Brooks and elsewhere through these years. And very few of us have what it takes to excel at the level he has achieved in the classroom as a senior administrator shaping the school's academic program for two decades, as a champion for the arts when the school needed one, and as a seasoned and reasoned colleague who always leaves those seeking his counsel feeling a bit better on the other side of a conversation. Between them, they have given 46 years of service to the school, and my hope is that we succeed in squeezing 46 more years out of them before all is said and done. How fortunate Brooks School would be if that comes to pass. Much like Bill Dunnell way back when, and in a tradition of extraordinary teaching that has graced our school for 96 years, all three of them are well into and continuing in careers that have enriched and continue to enrich this school in indelible ways with profound respect and admiration for what they have been as career educators, for what they have been to and for students and colleagues past and present, and for the talent and commitment they have so generously shared with our school community. I'm honored to invite forward to take their seats as the holders of the Waldo Holcomb Chair, Prince Charitable Trust Chair, and Independence Foundation Chair, Babette Caress Wielden, Timothy Richard Benson, and Lance Emerson Latham. Okay, as the three of them continue to sit there uncomfortably, uh, we will wrap up our service in a moment, but as I said, we will exit front to back, allowing family members and friends to get out to congratulate uh, our three chair recipients. We will then make our way to the student center where there's a great snack. Uh, and then after that, for faculty members who are available, family, friends, chair recipients, we'll move to uh, the head of school's house where we'll have a little more reception after that. But congratulations again to all three.